Good morning, everyone. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. Let's begin. First step, two taken into custody after standoff in Franklin. Let's take a listen to the video from WMUR News 9. Northern Pass can deliver what no other proposed hydro project in the region can. Power. Flowing into the New England grid by the end of 2020. Some six hours after police from multiple departments rushed to this small dead-end street in Franklin, the scene began to wrap up. It all stemmed from an alleged assault in Northfield. Surrounding towns told to be on the lookout for this man, David Fielding. I was really very good uh, shoe leather police work where we just started to look in places where we thought he might be. Uh, we had some information to go on and uh, my units did locate his vehicle and subsequently were able to locate the, uh, the individual in the house. Two people who live inside the home managed to get out when police arrived and told officers Fielding and another man were asleep inside. Because of the possibility of weapons being involved and freezing cold temperatures outside requiring officer rotations, a massive police presence was called in. We knew that this was a potentially dangerous situation and firearms were involved in this. Uh, there's an allegation that the uh, young lady had been uh, hit with the firearm earlier in the day. Hours into the standoff when the suspects were not coming out, loud bangs could be heard not far from the scene. Police using gas to coax the suspects out and finally take them into custody. After a search warrant of the home, authorities did find a gun. And Fielding now faces assault and other charges he'll be arraigned tomorrow in Merrimack Superior Court. Meantime, another man who was taken into custody tonight with Fielding has since been released. Live in Franklin, I'm Sharice LeClaire, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Rep. Joe Kennedy III to give response to President Trump's State of the Union. Let's take a listen to the video from WCVB Boston. Sorry about that, they're having a little technical difficulties with the video. Let me try one more time. Okay, looks like we're having technical difficulties with our video player for that report. Massachusetts Congress man Joseph Kennedy III will deliver the Democratic response to President Donald Trump's upcoming State of the Union address, Kennedy's staff confirmed Thursday night. Trump is scheduled to deliver the State of the Union address to Congress on Tuesday, January 30th. Kennedy, 37, is currently serving his third term representing Massachusetts' fourth Congressional District, which covers parts of Bristol, Middlesex, North Plymouth, and Worcester counties. Delivering the response will put the great nephew of former President John F. K. Kennedy on national television as the face of the Democratic Party. House Democratic Nancy Pelosi and U.S. Senate Democrat Leader Chuck 
E. Schumer called Kennedy a reckless fighter for working Americans. Schumer and Pelosi also announced that Virginia Delegate Elizabeth Guzman will deliver the Spanish language response to the State of the Union. Guzman, 44, is an immigrant from Peru who was recently elected to Virginia's House of Delegates. The Democratic leaders said Kennedy and Guzman will emphasize that Democrats are lesser focused on enhancing policies to benefit middle-class Americans, not special interest or the wealthiest. Classes canceled at Lewiston Middle School due to threat. Classes at Lewiston Middle School have been canceled Friday due to a threat. Superintendent Bill Webster said Thursday evening that a message was written in a bathroom that made a threat against the school for today. Lewiston police are investigating the threat, Webster said. DeVos awaits Trump's speech. Analysts predict what he'll tell global leaders. President Donald Trump is expected to deliver an American first message when he speaks at the World Economic Forum on Friday. Trump demand Mueller to be fired, but backed off after White House counsel refused. Report. Let's take a listen to the video from ABC News. Hey, what are you guys doing here? We've been helping you prepare and invest for retirement since day one. Why would we leave now? Because I'm retired now. So? We're Voya. We stay with you to and through retirement. With solutions to help provide income throughout. So you'll still be here to help me make smart choices? Well, with your finances, that is. We had nothing to do with that, uh, tie. Or the suit. Or the shirt. Voya. Voya. Helping you to and through retirement. Happy Wednesday. Welcome to The Briefing Room. Coming to you from the Washington Bureau of ABC News, I'm John Santucci, alongside Devin Dwyer. You came back for more? I did. I'm here. <laughs> Big day. Live bombshells today. Uh, Sarah getting a little hot under the collar there under questioning about what the president is do doing on gun policy. Uh, opioid policy, another one of those areas that he promised to do a lot, hasn't got a lot, a lot done. Uh, but the big story today is, of course, the Mueller investigation. Yeah, we are red hot and focused on the Russia pro from Capitol Hill all the way to what's going on in the Department of Justice. We learned overnight <clears throat> that more key members of the president's cabinet and inner circle met with Bob Mueller and his investigators a year ago. And now we're learning that Jeff Sessions met in the last couple of days. This is all revving up to what happened in the Oval Office just a couple months ago when President Trump allegedly asked. Okay, and there you go on part of that video. President Donald Trump ordered the firing of Robert Mueller last June, but he reacted his demand after White House counsel Donald F. McGahn II said he would resign from his post rather than execute the president's order. The New York Times reported Thursday night. And that does it for the Riley King newscast right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great 
rest of your day, and I'll see you back here later on today with another newscast. Goodbye, everyone.